Welcome to the show. I am extremely excited to have special guest Steve Spiro on the show. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. Really honored to, to be on the, on the same screen with you, sir. Oh, oh I'm, I'm excited to have you. I, I love the topic, love the edge that you have that we're going to dive into because I would say from you know the shy introverted piece, a lot of people feel that way and, and can't get, a, get out of their own way and break out of their, their shell necessarily. So let's dive right into to your hidden edge. I know it's you know, growing up as a shy introverted kid, having some learning issues as well as dyslexia. So let's let's dive in, give some backstory in that, and then really let's dive into how you lean into that supposedly disadvantage or, or weakness and, and really now are a master connector and speaker, all of those great things. Yeah, and no, I appreciate it. I mean, it's been a crazy journey, uh, Jeff. I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, I didn't even know I had the disability. I just knew when I was you know, you know, when they had me reading out loud a class, I, you know, I would stutter and, you know, my ears would turn beat red. I was super right. embarrassed, humiliated, honestly. Uh, I, you know, was trying to read. I just realized I couldn't get comprehend. It was crazy. And, and so then, you know, getting bullied as well. And, you know, just um, back and this was not cyber bullying back then. I'm a little older than that, but, but there was some bullying going on and yeah, it's just, I just, what it did is it made me go into a shell. And I know we're going to probably touch on the the connecting aspect of it, but you know, being you know being this sort of person that just wanted to protect myself from other people, just just basically, and and then I you know I wound up figuring out I had some talent, wound up going into advertising. My dad had a liquor store, so it was entrepreneurship was in my blood, mm -hmm. but dissuaded me from that, and I wound up going into advertising marketing, went to high school and college for that, uh, got out of college, couldn't get a job, start a company, and. I had a really a, a illustrious career in advertising and then, you know, started training the martial arts in 83. I think that was a way I could kind of maybe break some barriers, no pun intended, uh, in that realm. And, you know, so I was doing that a lot and and I had got involved in real estate and rental property stuff. So I think, you know, I was I was the ultimate busy professional. But in my case, yes, I was proud, but I also used that to block people from me and just to kind of protect from being being hurt and you know there were all this ridicule and all these things that I dealt with for years and I didn't even think about it I just it wasn't something I was conscious but I just you know people would be like you know hey let's get together and I'm like yeah I'm busy I just can't and I I, I used it as a way to kind of keep my guard up and keep people away so uh yeah and that was kind of me for many 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 years for sure do you remember kind of the first instance of being bullied or or speaking up in class and having that experience did do you remember when that first kind of occurred i think like a lot of people we tend to i think women if they remember the pain they go through in pregnancy they <laughs> they uh they wouldn't have a second child so i think when there's painful situations are we we have a tendency to suppress or, or try to forget them I do remember, though, a few things I remember, you know, in the, on the bullying side, you know, my last name is, is Spiro, obviously. And so I was very awkward and uncoordinated. And probably a lot of that had to do with my self-esteem. And, you know, my dad, was, I, I learned out later, he, he was also picked on as a kid. And okay. he didn't teach me how to fight and all those, those rites of passages that we often go through as a, you know, when we're a young, a young kid. I didn't have any of that stuff. He, I think he played baseball with me one time. And but, you know, one thing that my my whole, uh, the neighborhood, my nickname, you know, again, Spiro was Spaz. That was my nickname. And, okay. uh, you know, think about how that would affect somebody's self-esteem growing up and them believing that they were sort of a Spaz. Um, right. I do remember the on the flip side of it, going to a sleepaway camp mm -hmm. for one summer. And there was nobody from the old, from the neighborhood that was there. Okay. And I remember reinventing myself and and being a completely different person. And it was such a great experience that nobody knew that I was called Spaz back at home. No one knew that I was uncoordinated. Nobody knew that I was, you know, had a, a, a low self worth. And I was able to kind of just be somebody new, and it was awesome. And it taught, it showed me something, you know. Yeah. How did you? I, I'm interested. How did you apply that lesson then, as you got older, right? It just showed me that, you know, you could put yourself around different people in other industries, other arenas, and not have to take the old baggage 
of what you had or was were or did into this new situation because not everybody knows those things that you've done or been or who you are. So I think it's great. And, you know, obviously I'm, I don't forget the past, you know, it's, it shaped who I am, but I also don't have to live in the past and I can be, I can, you know, today I could be a new person. I could reinvent myself. It's going to be, the, you know, I believe who we are is based upon, of course, the books you read and the people you associate with. But we, I, I, one of the important lessons I've learned over time is that we could reinvent who and what we are. We don't have to be stuck in the mud with who that old person was. So I think it was a great lesson. And, you know, going into the martial arts was a chance for me to reinvent who I was. Although I did take some of the old insecure, broken person that I was into that, but it did give me a place to, to kind of start fresh. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I personally, I was a very shy introverted kid and sports gave me that way out as well. Probably very similar to, yep. to the martial arts where all of a sudden it's a different playing field. I luckily was pretty good at sports, so I could excel and that, that created a different circle. Right. And, and so, so, so true. So obviously being bullied growing up that must have built some resiliency, some tenacity, some hard work. Like, how did you morph that into then being successful in advertising and, and having a career and doing those sort of things? You know, what was that process like? Because I love how you mentioned we can constantly evolve. We can constantly have another iteration of ourselves. We don't need to be stuck in the past. So many people, though, that that's like an anchor, right? They, they can't get past it. They can't. Yep break free from it, right? They're, they're trying to, but they can't. What are, what were some ways that you kind of built that process as you moved forward into your career? Yeah. I mean, for me, the martial arts, and I think probably like sports did for you, Jeff, the martial arts was a big development uh, area for me. And, and um, you know, one of the things that I learned in the martial arts is if you outwork people, you will succeed. And I, I want to taking that, uh, you doing that, taking up that mantle, so to speak. I didn't miss a class. If I was sick, I showed up anyway. It was probably not good by health standards today, but I, I showed up anyway. And I, I said, I'll just watch class. And then I, and then I, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'll just put my uniform, my gi on. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll just do the first part of the class. And by the time the whole, the class was done, I did the whole class, you know? But I just did things that were diff that were better, not better. I did things more than the than the average person, mm -hmm. and I saw myself succeed. But more than anything, I earned my self respect. I started to see that I could be a, I could be different. I could, you know, I, I just I fell in love with myself. That sounds kind of weird, but I, I did. I just I said, you know what, you're you're great, you're awesome, right? And so through working, I did that. Uh, I, I applied that in many areas of my life is, is outworking the, the average person. And I learned that, you know, I can, um, it was, a, it was a good place for me to build up my, that self-confidence. Right. Uh, so yeah, that was a big one. And then the other thing I learned is I, on the resiliency side, you know, I, you know, I, I got my nose busted. I was telling this to a group of people the other day when I was doing some speaking. Okay. I did, I did a, um, I learned that, you know, my sensei, who was about six, five, 300 pounds, African-American, big menacing dude. Right. Uh, he was just, and he would come at you like a freight train. And I just, I panicked I, and I ducked and I, I ducked right into his knee coming up in a roundhouse kick and busted my nose really bad. The nose was sort of on the side of the face and I took the nose and I just straightened it. Cause I, I'd been to, I'd been to the, emergency room a bunch of times from stitches here, stitches here, stitches here. And I'm like, it's going to be a five, six hour. And, and I know that they don't put a cast on the nose. Right. So I straightened my nose and I went back to class and I said, I'm I, let's go. You know, like I just said, I just said I was going to do things that I'm just going to fight through it. And one thing that I learned is it was, there was some, I was, a, I'm still short, short guy, not a huge frame, gotcha. you know, and, I, I got up against big guys and I said, all right, I'm going to develop that one thing that will, will be my strength. And, and in my case, it was developing a reverse punch and being able to just 
no matter what, these guys, no matter what, they knew it was coming. I got a, you know, a reverse punch in on their solar plexus or their rib cage. And it would be funny. We'd be in the locker room after class and everyone would be showing off their, their red tattoo that they got from me from getting punched in, in a side or in the, in the stomach or by the, the solar plexus. But that lesson there was, okay, you develop that one thing. I think um, mm. there's a book on it uh, called The One Thing. I, I, yep. Um, great book. And and I developed the one thing. And then I said, I'm going to take that and take that into the business world. And, and and the other thing I learned is, you know, I made black ball three and a half years. My wife took her 10 years. And we had a guy in class who's the most uncoordinated guy in the world. He did it in 20. Okay. And I learned that. If you, but all of us made it. The ones that didn't make black belt, they quit. Right. So I learned if you stay steady, you do the work, you follow your sensei, you don't quit, you're going to win, you're going to succeed. And that was a big, you know, influencer for me in terms of success because there's a tendency, right? I mean, there's a tendency for us to kind of give up quickly and to, you know, if it's not going, especially with the younger folks, right? It's just, you know, they used to, right, they see movies today and, you know, it looks like it goes from the, the struggle to victory in like two hours in a movie. And they think it should be two hours for them to see success. Right. And it's not like that. You got to got to go through the suck, S-U-C, to get to success, the first three letters of success, right? Yep. You got to go through the stuff. So it's, um, I've learned about, it's about being persistent and grit and determination and, and developing that one thing that's going to, going to you know, get you to succeed. And those, those, I tried to translate in every part of my life. Oh, I love that. And I love how you, you know, earned your self-respect just from going in and, and doing it consistently day after day. And I, I love how you said you fell in love with yourself because that is something that is so lost as adults, as just human beings. I know yep. I have taken clients through an exercise of just staring at themselves in the mirror and telling telling themselves i love you and some struggle with that process because we never say it to ourselves right we're always our harshest critic and we always continue to pound ourselves over the head with the hammer right when we don't do things that we think we should do or or don't follow through on our words so i i love that piece and i love how you said hey you made it three years your wife 10 another person 20 and it's just a consistency. If you dedicate yourself to it, eventually you'll be successful. The issue is we just don't know when. And to your right. point, we're fed uh, six pack abs in six minutes. Like you can do this that yeah. quick. The and magic pill. The yeah. magic pill, right? That That's going to solve everything. No, yeah. you need to commit. You need to decide, cut off all other things and you will eventually get there. It just, you don't know when. And, that's and the so other piece of it that that I kind of touched on, but maybe not enough is, is the power of what you have, you, can, you do have control of, right? So one of the things, the reason I made black belt three and a half versus 10 and my wife is I was much more dedicated. I put in more work. I was, I, I, I really was, I, I was, I, I was consumed by it quite frankly. Okay. And so following a sensei, following, you know, your, your instructor, but also doing the, the extra work is going to get you there faster, right? It, it's it's getting those 10,000 hours, aka my Malcolm Gladwell, right? Mm -hmm. 10,000 hours in quicker, it's going to get you success, right? You know, and you can, but yes, on the, in the long haul, if you don't quit, you win. Yeah, and I, I, I love how power of what you can control. You can tr control your, your effort, right? The work yep. you put in, putting in extra effort, extra work. If, if you want to condense that time range, you got to put yep. in extra. Right. And, and then you can condense it. And so many times people forget they see that or hear that 10,000 hour. And they're like, well, if I put an hour a day in for how many years, then I'll get there. Well, yep. what if you put 10 hours in a day? You'd, you'd get there so much quicker and you would just exponentially, you know, increase your, your level that you, you raise as you go through the process. No doubt. Yep. Yep. No, I love, love those points. So obviously coming from a, shy introverted being bullied you know having some some learning challenges as you grow up now connecting with others right you had, you had mentioned hey for some time in your life when people would invite you to do things now you didn't want to right you you kind of had this you built this layer around you so you wouldn't get hurt 
now fast forward to where you're at, right? Obviously you run, run a master connector show. You've got a ton of connections. We connected, we've, you've connected me with other people in your network. You now speak, take, take me through that kind of journey because I, I love to start where it was, where the pain is. And now seeing a product that it will never be finished, but you know, now that you're speaking, doing things that you're passionate about, we'd love to hear that, that side of the journey. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And, and yeah, I mean, so, you know, I've learned in life, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And through a really good friend uh, that I worked with in advertising at the time, he introduced me to a very successful entrepreneur. Okay. And that this man who I was with this weekend, it was just, he, he had the ball of wax, you know, he was, he had, you know, time and money. He was, he just extremely successful. But the biggest thing that impacted me that two things. One is he had peace, absolute peace. And then the other thing was he was touching lives. He was making an impact on lives. And so I was, I was really intrigued, chased him. He became a mentor to me and, and he still to this day has that role. And it's been amazing and very transformative. He got me on a path of self-development, you know, books and audios and networking. Cause I honestly, I was, I was growing, but not at the capacity I needed to. I knew that there was something that I needed to change. I needed to be a better version of myself. I knew I needed to. I just didn't know how to do it. Gotcha. And so he became that GPS, so to speak, if you will, right? I remember the old days of having the Hangstrom net maps and uh, the stress level of trying to get around and having a GPS in my life. Well, anyway, the, the journey has been a, 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 an amazingly amazing journey, but it's been a long journey, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't change overnight sometimes. And I didn't. And I had a lot of reprogramming that had to happen. But one of the things he did is he challenged me. He challenged me. He said, listen, I want you to meet three total strangers every day. Now, maybe if you're in the Midwest or the South where people are super nice, it's, that's okay. But I'm in the New York area. Right. You know, I just recently moved to Connecticut. But before that, I was in New York. And, you know, just 25 minutes outside of the city. You know, if you talk to a stranger in New York, they're going to shoot you. You know, you, you know, if you're a kid, your parents told you don't talk to strangers, they'll kidnap you. Right. So it's just a different thing. But it got me got me outside of myself. And over time, I started to become, uh, you know, better at networking. But there was still that blockage. Okay. Eventually, and it took years and years, and I'll, I'll, you know, I don't think we'll have enough time to get into it. But I went up through a few, through reading a certain book and going to a therapist for like, you know, five sessions, uh, some, uh, silent meditation treat, all those things ha had a factor. Um, that really helped me to find peace within myself. And now I said, all right, I'm good. And then I said, you know what? You know, and, and so to be full disclosure, full transparency, this gentleman that I'm talking about, who was amazing, I was always comparing myself to him and feeling okay. like I fell short. And I, I was big on the compare, compare game. And, and I always was never good enough. And I started to realize, you know what, I'm good enough. Now, I'm a really great, I'm a first-class version of myself. I'll be a second-class version of somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? But I have challenges or weaknesses I've dealt with. Maybe that could be valuable for people. And I started leading with those weaknesses, right? So I have a talk that I give, and it's, you know, in our weakness, there's power. And I started to say, when I started to share some of those vulnerabilities and those weaknesses with people in, you know, conversations like, you know, like you and I had, Jeff, when we did a Zoom call, Yep. Um, I found that the connections were m powerfully meaningful and we connected at a deeper level versus just, you know, I, li I like to call it the what do you do dance when, you know, when when you connect with somebody. Hey, what do you do? Uh, yeah, OK, what do you do? And, you know, what kind of what's good referral? No, let's get into like who the pe who we are as people. Right. And I found the connection was strong. And then the second thing I found is the more I leaded with my weakness because I was hiding them, I was, ex I was trying to prevent from being exposed. Mm -hmm. you know, from those weaknesses, those insecurities, I had more hangups than the phone company. Okay. I was really a, a messed up guy for years. The more I, you know, I, I led with it, the more powerfully confident I got. So it was pretty cool. And, and so it's been amazing leading with vulnerabilities, leading with weaknesses. And today, as you stated, I think I'm, I'm up to 18,000 contacts on my phone and I'm somewhere around 22 LinkedIn connections, 22,000 LinkedIn connections. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's so cool that, that this shy introvert kid that was so messed up and, you know, insecure could speak to anybody. And, you know, I speak to, you know, at times thousands of people and it's pretty awesome. 
that I'm able to do that. And I do that not because I am this, this, Oh, look at me. No, because I want to be a blessing. My, my Mm. mission on this planet is to be the light, to uplift, inspire and encourage people and hopefully show them, listen, if this messed up kid, you know, shine to red kid, you know, bullied kid from the Bronx could, could, can do something like this. You can too. I, I I love that story. Thanks for for sharing and leading leading with weakness, vulnerability, right? Because you build a deeper connection. And and I said it, and I, I think not to generalize, but men especially, it's it's more difficult to have those deeper conversations. It's about oh, yeah. hey, how are the kids or the Yankees or yeah, you know I'm a course. Phillies fan, right? Like that's all we're talking about. It's it's not about stuff that truly should matter and we should have conversations about. So I love that, uh, that piece and, and how you do that. And listen, we all have skeletons in the closet. We all have things and issues and insecurities. And I think so many times we think nobody else has it. It's only right. me. And and that's just so far from the truth, right? I could probably throw a baseball and hit a couple people that have the same things or go through the same issues right now. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's so incredibly powerful when you understand that and you can kind of say, okay, I'm going to lead with that. And here's who I am. Because to your point that builds confidence because you have nothing you're hiding from, Hey, here's who I am. Here's take it or leave it. This is me. And, and that's a great place to, uh, to come from. I do want to ask you this question. So I know public speaking, you're moving into speaking and, and doing that as a, as a passion. How was that the first time you did that or first time you stepped on a stage, right? Coming from your background, because people are scared to death to speak in public, right? And yeah. listen, I still get butterflies. I just did it a couple of weeks ago and, and I have a system though, a process I go through and just go with it. What was that experience like the first time you did that? Yeah, it's it's interesting, right? So, um, yeah, you're right. They say that it's um, it's more of a fear than death. Right, right. I mean, People would rather be in the coffin than yeah. given the eulogy. Yeah, it's true. Yep. Um, and I was one of those guys a while back, but you know, when I found that I, when I got to speak from the heart, when it was things that I was experiencing, they were easier than trying to memorize a speech. And so the beginning, early stages of my speaking, I guess, turn, you know, you take it when I was in the martial arts and I was asked to give a class and I, you know, I saw my sensei, my instructor do the class and I saw his mannerisms and what he would say and how he would, you know, how he'd say it. And that eventually got a, a, a picture of that. And I started to do that. And, but I wasn't giving some kind of canned speech. It was just going through things that was inside of me. And then the other piece of it is, is when, you know, when I started to, and I, you know, they, the, 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 the arenas, if you will, that I was speaking on were much smaller and have grown. Right. Mm-hmm. But I also realized that the more you pour into yourself, the more you can overflow and it's a lot easier to, to speak and to share your heart when you're, you're filling it with good stuff. So it's another big part of what, what has been for me, but to answer your question, yeah, I mean, I, you know, how, how did I overcome the fear? I'll let you know when I when it happens, right? <laughs> uh, it's still it's still there, but it's a lot more simpler because I know why I'm doing it, right? Which is to really be a light, to inspire, speaking as much as from the heart as I can. I'm, I I don't believe in scripting stuff, so I'm just trying to speak, uh, you know. And and I also know that part of my vulnerabilities, my weakness is that I'm going to mess up, and I give myself grace. So if I stutter a little bit when I speak, so be it. If I say um a little bit more than I should, so be it. I'm going to work on not doing those things, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. When I when I started to do that, I feel better about myself and not really judge myself. Mm-hmm. Speaking was a lot easier. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that fact. And when you speak from the heart and it comes from, your energy, your soul, and you're, you're looking to make an impact. I mean, people feel that, right. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm right in line with you. I mean, I'll, I'll have key points I want to touch on that I kind of map out, but I don't type anything down. It's all coming from, you know, just what I practice on myself. And then it often, you know, authentically goes out to 
who I'm speaking to. So love, love those, love those pieces for sure. So Steve, I've loved the conversation. Where can people connect with you, follow you? Where can they find you if they want more information? Absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to grow a speaking career. So if they're interested in having me as a speaker, I love to, to speak with mid-sized companies, large companies that have a, a sales team. So, um, you know, one way to find me to, 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 to talk to me and see what I do as a speaker, go to spiro-global.com. Okay. Uh, but generally, uh, LinkedIn is the best vehicle for me as far as the social media tool. I do have a YouTube channel. I do have a, some of the other platforms. But uh, And another easy way is stevespiro.com. Just go to stevespiro.com. Uh, -P so S-T-E-V-E-S-P-I-R-O.com. And uh, they can go in all of the links to the YouTube and to the LinkedIn, you know, and to the other, the speaking uh, you know, site is all there. So if nothing more, stevespiro.com is the easiest way. Awesome. Steve, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you so much for the honor. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. Rise, fight, love, repeat. Get after it. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to your Hidden Edge podcast. You are now part of the movement, part of a tribe who's on a mission to uncover their hidden edge. We are stronger together. So please share this. Show up with one person in your network that you want to help. Together, we can empower others and connected, we can make a dent in the universe.